Hey, beautiful people. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Just got in from my walk. No, did 3,000 3, steps. I'm pretty proud of myself. So, did that. And um, now I'm in. And I want to ask you guys a question. My question is to you guys, what kind of relationship do you have with the Lord? It's not a trick question. It's either I got this relationship or that relationship. Now, I put it in five categories, you know. No, this is how I look at it. You got your family reunion child. We all know what a family reunion is about, you know. It's that kind of relationship we've got with your God with the family reunion. You you go, you you, you pack your toiletries, you pack your clothes. You no, know, if you got gifts for your family, you pack your gifts. You just take everything that you gonna need on that trip to the family reunion. You pack it, you prepare yourself. Is that kind of relationship you got with God and preparing yourself? I look at it, okay, you grab your Bible off the shelf. It's been up there for you know, a whole a whole year. So you dust it off and clean it up and you set it on your dresser and you look through your closet, find your you no know, nice clothes. No way. This would be a nice outfit to wear or that will be a nice outfit to wear. These shoes look good. No hey. No, you're going, do I remember the preacher name? I was preacher. I got to call this person and see, no, what's the preacher name? I forgot. Or, no, how's brother, no, doc doing, brother doc been there for eight months. If you would just stay around, you would know that brother doc died about eight months ago. But, hey, you know, talk about that. And, no, you, you. Just prepare, which to me, I'm like, oh, wow, will I have to prepare for this? So you're preparing yourself and everything, and you get everything together, and I'm looking down at my notes. I wrote down some notes. And just like you preparing for a family reunion, and then we have the Christmas and resurrection. You go only on two days. Now, Christmas and no Easter, no resurrection. So, are you that kind of person? No, hey, that that is what it is. No, hey, I go twice. No, ask him to forgive me, and I'm out doing what I've been doing. No, the rest of the time, or oh, is you a good child? No, hey. You go to Sunday school and Bible study. That's enough church for you. Some people are like that. You no, know, but Bible study and Sunday, Sunday, you no, know, Sunday, uh, Sunday morning church. If it's Sunday school, Sunday school, whatever Sunday consists of you there. And then you got the clingy child. I'm in that category. I mean, every time I'm turning around and I'm talking to the Lord about something, not always asking him for something, no, give me this or give me that, but just thanking him for what he have to is thus far. Because you know what? If I look at it, he woke me up this morning. I mean, let me open my eyes, let me move my arms my legs able to walk able to just get up and and move about and just just doing you no know, just being you no know, able to just carry on with the day and you no know, we all you no know, we all got a certain relationship with the lord and Your relationship is your relationship. I'm not going to judge you and I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. First of all, you're grown. You do what you want to do. At the end of the day, when you're stand, when you standing up in front of the Lord, I ain't going to be nowhere around. 
that's between you and your that's between you and the Lord. He know how to do his job. He don't need me nowhere around. I have no clue of what's going on with you. But we need to start spending just a little bit more quality time with them. And I like to really spend my quality time talking to them when I'm out on a walk. And it's just talking to him. No, just being in conversation with him. And I love it because I get to tell him everything. Everything what's on my mind. No, he sees it all before I even can say anything. He knows all and he sees all. So what I'm telling him is no secret. My life is an open book to him. He's just sitting up there just looking at me, probably shaking his head. What's she going to do next? But I try to be a, a nice person. I try to, you know help people if they need help. I mean, I'm here. Call me. I mean, I don't want to be what some people call useless space. I want to be, no, she was, she was, when she, when I, when I needed her, she was there. And I want the Lord to see that's the kind of relationship I have with him. When her brothers and sisters needed her, she was there. Oh, yeah, my brothers and sisters. It, you know, at the end of the day, the Bible said it was only Adam and Eve. And we evolved from those two. So, down the line, we are family. I mean, I was reading, um, I was doing um, one of those where you put the letters in. And it's, a, it's supposed to be a true fact. Whatever the end result is supposed to be a true fact. And one of the facts was that 50 generations down the down the line, 50 generations going back, we are all connected. 20, 20, 20, gener I mean 50 generations back. That's a lot of generations. A lot of generations. But just think, 50 generations back... We are all connected some way. In some way, I am connected to you. Now, we go off no mother, father, brother, sisters, aunts, uncles, so on and so forth. But if we look at it at the end of the day, Adam and Eve had kids. And from their kids, Brothers and sisters had kids. It is what it is. Their brothers and brothers and sisters got together and had kids. And moving on, they kids had kids. Moving on, they kids had kids. Until you think about it, the Lord wiped everybody off the earth except for Noah and his family. And you think about Noah and his family came from Adam and Eve and we involved that away even though some was sitting over here in this corner of the world some people were sitting over here in this corner of the world some people were sitting over here in this corner of the world some people were sitting over there in that corner of the world but at the end of the day it was just two people they had no something some way, somebody had to be doing something for me to be here, for you to be here. But hey, I love everybody. I can't help it but love everybody. No, it took me a while to get to where I could love everybody because, I mean, people would look at me crazy and they were, they were like, uh-uh. Nah, that's not, that's not me. And you can, you, you see that that's not God. That's not of God. And he was like, no, she, she, she one of those, you know, family reunion type of, you know, he is, you no, know, mm, once in a while, yeah, but, mm, mm I mean, my relationship over time 
grew into I was this clingy kind of no clingy clingy kind of child. You know, every time you see me doing something, I'm either talking to the Lord, reading His Word, praying, just doing something to keep in contact with Him. And that's what my relationship is about. It's about being there with Him, asking Him what can, what do He need me to do? What is my job? And told me you know what your job is remember all those times that I was poking you and you couldn't get yourself no what Lord I can't do this no I can't do this yes you can you're my child you could do anything you put your mind to as long as you have me in front of you you can do it no, so get up there and do it. That's the kind of relationship I want you to have with me. I want you to have that clingy relationship that I told you to do something, you in the midst of it, but every time you turn around, you're coming to me. That's it. And that's the kind of relationship I have because when I'm dealing with no people or situations or, or anything, I have to go to him at the beginning. And then I have to ask him, what do you need me to do now? And when I say that I have that clingy kind of relationship, I do. Because I'm always around him, I'm always calling on him, whatever. Before I go to bed, I need him. When I wake up, I need him. When I go out and walk, I need him. When I eat my food, I need him. I need him. And I am not ashamed of my relationship. I'm not ashamed to say I got the clingy kind of relationship. I think that's what he want from me. For me to know hey, you can't make it through your day without having me. And you know what? I, I, I can live with that. I can, I can live with it. It is no problem with me. I can live with needing the Lord in my life every single day, every minute, every second. I need Him. I can't do anything without Him. I mean... I'm not left up to my own, you know, own will. I have to have somebody else. Just like a little child. You no, know, they need their mother and their father. They need help. They can't feed themselves. They can't go to the restroom themselves. They can't do anything but lay there and probably cry and get on their mama nerves. No, you, she didn't fed you. She didn't made sure you had a clean bottle. A clean bottle. She didn't made sure you had a full bottle. She didn't made sure that you are comfortable. But you're still crying. You're irritable. Why are you crying? You want to be picked up. You're spoiled. And that's the way sometimes I get spoiled. Ew, I don't want to be doing this and I don't want to do it. Lord. Lord, no, do it. Do it and be done with it. It's that simple. You do it, you be done with it, you go about your business. And you know your business is his business. And he's about his business. You are his child. You are his business. He loves you dearly. Dearly, dearly, dearly. And he wants you to know that. And he wants you to be able to call on him. Let, let him know that I need you, Lord. I hear you calling me. What is it that I can do for you? 
or better what is it I can do for me that's going to enlighten you I mean I got so many things I want to tell y'all about the goodness of him he's really good just give yourself up to him wholeheartedly released that's what I had to learn released you can't just give him bits and part of you okay well I'm not busy no Thursday at 8 30 to 8 45 I can give him that no he don't want that time he want all the time you gotta give him all your time no other way to put it he want it all you want that clingy child. I mean that child that knows that, hey, <clears throat> it's him and only him. Nobody else. That is willing to stand up and say that for him. He want that kind of child. That clingy child. He don't need no fair weather children. They'll come over every now and then when they want something. Ah. Don't come to me when you want something. Or come to me when you didn't put yourself into this hole. You didn't, you didn't dug for yourself. You dug the hole for yourself. <clears throat> because if, if before you put, you no, know, instead of you putting him in ahead of the, of the situation, you, you went about it yourself. A lot of us do that. Before we will call on the Lord to help us. I, I could do this myself. I, I could do that myself. I was one of those people. I was grown. I knew what I can do. I don't need the Lord. The Lord is not here. The Lord did this. The Lord did that. And then I thought about it. I did it. I did it because I told him I can do it. And what he did, he just stood by. He watched me. He watched me. You said you could do it yourself. You know what? I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to stand back here because I got your back. But go for it. And that's what we do a lot. We know what we're doing. We grown. We can do this. We can do that. We don't need the Lord. No. What can the Lord do for me? I, I can do this on my own. Okay. Do it. Tell me how far you get. You be talking. Ah, look at it. It's messed up. You know what? This didn't work out. Yet. And that didn't work out. And I can't believe this happened. And that happened. Because you put yourself in that situation. You and only you. You can blame yourself. Before you before you started anything, put it in the Lord's hands. That's all he wants you to do. Give it to me. Let me work it out for you. I'm going to give you directions. I'm going to give you no instruction. Just sit back and wait for the instructions. Sit back and wait for the instructions. And you, well, I told him two minutes ago, what's taking him so long? Wait a minute. Two minutes? How long did it take for you to get into the situation? <laughs> two minutes. Some people are like that. It's been, it's been over five minutes. Why you ain't called? Because. Sit back and Relax. You ain't nothing gonna happen to you if you wait a while. Well, how long? I don't know. I don't know how long. But just sit back and wait. Have faith. As big as a grain of mustard seed. That's all it that's all it's have to be. Have faith. And once you have faith, that's all you need. And you're going to start seeing things work in your favor. Favor after favor. 
He'll blow your mind. You deal with me. I look around me. And I think, oh my God, I think I should have been in trouble many a times. But no what? Nah. I put it in his hands. And I'm clinging on to him. Listening. Because I'm going to tell y'all about me starting to read, when I started to read the Bible again. I tried to get through it once. It was hard. I ain't going to tell you no story. It was hard. I think I, I, think I got lost in Genesis. In Genesis. I'm being honest with you. I was told to read Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Start there. And I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Went to Genesis and I got lost. <laughs> did I get lost? I don't know. But I did. But I did it again. And this time it was a whole different story. i tell y'all about this story. And every time I think, I tell everybody about the story. Because I figure, wow. Really? Wow. But that's when he when he does anything in my life, I'm like that. Wow. Why am I so surprised? I asked him and he did it. He told me, you no. Know, he asked me. I asked him, Lord, where should I start in the Bible? Do I need to Go with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again? No. Do I start at Genesis? No. Exodus? Sit back and wait. And that night, something happened. And I can't wait to tell y'all that story. That'll be my next story. And you'll probably be as surprised as I was. Because I still can't, I still, I'm still like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. But, he does answer your prayers. All you gotta do is ask. Okay, I love you, sweet people. I gotta get so I can take me a shower and prepare to go to Bible study tonight and fellowship with all the sweet people in the church and have a good time in the Lord. That's what it's all about. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.